Hello, welcome to this Deep Sky Stacker tutorial. The aim of this tutorial is to familiarise you with Deep Sky Stacker if you're new to Deep Sky Astrophotography because it's a very useful piece of software. I've been using it for about 10, 11 years now so I feel like I've got something to share but I want to keep it really to the important point so not to overwhelm anyone that's new to it. So what does Deep Sky Stacker do? Generally with Deep Sky Imaging you need to capture multiple long exposures and then stack them together to increase the signal to noise and that's basically a fancy way of saying make your picture better. What are these tabs inside Deep Sky Stacker? We've got this registering and stacking tab here and registering is basically evaluating each of your frames that you take, your light frames. So the, the images you take with your DSLR or your your dedicated astronomy camera called light frames and then you can register them here and it gives them a score. The higher the score, the better, the sharper the image is, the less trailing stars there are. And you can go through manually with Deep Sky Stacker and just deselect the ones with a low score. But for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna keep it simple and just get Deep Sky Stacker to pick the best 85 or 90%. So let's get going and I'll talk through what things are. So on this left hand side you can see the things that are highlighted in red. These are the most important things. So if I go into open picture files, I can find my TIFF files for M31. It's probably important to point out that you really want to stack raw files and not like JPEGs or PNG because you want the full dynamic range of your images to play with. So I'm going to select the first one, do control A and open all those files. I think there's about 40 odd, but you can't see that yet. You can see here it says light frame zero, dark frame zero, flats, dark bias, flat offset, all that, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so what are these darks and flats and offset? Dark files are basically the noise that's captured over the same exposure length as your light frames and you can take those and subtract them from your files. Flats are because the field illumination on your camera sensor attached to a telescope won't be uniform. There'll be something called vignetting where the image is brighter in the centre compared to the outside and that's because you've got things in your imaging train like uh, adapters and baffles inside the telescope and flatteners and coma correctors, all sorts of things like that. So the field illumination on the outside isn't as bright as in the centre, but you've also got gradient on your image from like street lights, if you've not got a light pollution filter, or the moon can cause a lot of gradient on your images also, if you're not doing narrowband imaging or something like that. Also dust, dust on your sensor can block the light. So you can subtract any dust from your sensor or any vignetting or gradient by taking flats. I won't go into how you do these too much for now because I just feel it's too much for this tutorial because I'm only going to be sticking with light frames for this tutorial to show you to keep it as simple as possible. Offset bias, that's the fixed pattern noise on your, your sensor and you, you basically take really fast exposures and subtract the fixed pattern noise. So I'm not going to go too deep into those. So the first thing I'm going to do is come down here and check all. And now you can see under light frames I've got 56, that's more than I thought actually, I thought it was about 40 odd. So okay I've got 56 and you can you can go through these manually by clicking on them and you can see that the image appears here and you can play with these using this slider. You can adjust the brightness and how they appear on the screen. It won't have any effect on your final image at all but there you go you can just play with those and get them so you can just see what's going on really and you can see if you hover your cursor over you get kind of like a really zoomed in view in the top left hand corner so you can examine your stars and things like that so you can manually after registering you can go in and register and it will give you a score here and you can just go through manually and deselect them but I'm not going to do that I'm going to get Deep Sky Stacker to do it I've checked all I'm now going to go to this next red tab, which is an important one called Register Checked Pictures. It says select the best 100%. So if I leave that as is, it's just going to select all of these. 
but I want it to pick the best sort of 85% and we'll do it that way. Next thing to do though is go to the advanced tab and this is a slider for detecting the stars so it can align the images with each other when it's stacking them and if you go this way it makes this detection method less sensitive if you go to the left it makes it more sensitive ideally you only need a few hundred stars at the most you certainly need more than like 20 but you don't need thousands of them there is a strange quirk with my Fuji camera though where it literally goes from zero to thousands on one of these percentiles so if I go compute and to see what, how many stars it detects. So we can see at 39% it's detecting nothing. If I go to 34% and recompute, nothing still. It will just completely fall off a cliff at some point. You can see now that it's getting thousands of them. So that's got like, yeah, <laughs> 1,971. So I'm going to pull that back a bit, 32%. That's how many stars it's saying it's detected. And this is the strange quirk of this Fuji camera, which I don't want you to be alarmed about because if you're using a Canon or Nikon, the the, the progression is a lot more sl slow. Like it will go from like, you can move it 1% and it will change by like 50 stars or something. Um, and you can select like a few hundred or even 200 with a Canon camera, for example. But this Fuji, it seems to go a bit crazy in Deep Sky Stacker. So I just want to find the percentile where it goes from zero to the least amount of stars possible, which unfortunately will be thousands. Yeah, so we are stuck with that 1971 stars detected. Ideally, I wouldn't want that many stars detected because it's a lot of processing power because every image it stacks, it's looking for that many stars to align. Also, there's a danger if you're stacking thousands and thousands and thousands of stars, it's actually not detecting stars, it's detecting the noise. But this is the fewest stars I can select using my Fuji X-T1 camera. So we are going to go with that. There's a reduce the noise by using a medium filter. I use, I just leave that on. We can go to recommended settings. Everything in green is what's, what it's set to do. So here it says use Sigma clipping, or I could switch that to auto adaptive weighted average. Now, nowadays I would 100% always use Sigma clipping because what that does is it removes anything that's not typical on your frames. So anything out of the ordinary, like a satellite or a plane will get automatically deleted and with the satellites going up and getting more and more this is only going to get more important so i'd recommend always using sigma clipping so that's highlighted in green so we're good to go there and i'm going to hit okay so you can go into stacking parameters and to be honest this has got two times drizzle on it i want to undo that i don't want that on i mean you can i won't go through all these on this uh tutorial because I just don't think it's needed to start out with just go with standard settings and we'll go okay so here it's saying 56 frames it's not giving me a total exposure so I'm a bit concerned because normally we would have a total exposure time there but I'm just going to see what it does so hit okay and now it's registering those images this is where the registering section is where it's actually scoring them. And you could actually deselect stack after registering and individually look at your scores and deselect the ones you don't want to stack. But I'm just selecting, I'm getting the Deep Sky Stacker software to choose the best 85%. I'll just speed this up now so you can get to the end of it. So it's finished registering the images now and if we come down here we can see that we've now got scores associated with these images 
actually some of them have got zero which I'm hoping are the ones that are in the 15% which will be taken away and now it's stacking those registered images those 85% good frames to use in our final image and that increases the signal to noise so it gives you a better picture with less noise on your image so you can stretch the data more without the noise appearing basically. If you take a single frame and stretch the data there the noise gets very quickly very bad but if you've got a lot of files that you've stacked, a lot of pictures you've stacked, you can stretch it a lot further before any noise becomes apparent. And stretching your images in post-processing is how you get a lot of the detail out of your images. But that will be in the GIMP tutorial I do next. Now it's computing the final image now. It's important to point out that when it appears, it's not going to look brilliant. All the information's there, but it's not been processed. So it will either look really light or really dark. You won't probably see what's going on. You basically just need to save that file, import it into some software to actually go to town on bringing out that detail from your image after you've stacked it in Deep Sky Stacker. You can actually do a bit of image processing in, in Deep Sky Stacker. It has got some tools for doing that, but I'd only recommend using those to have a quick look at your, your results. So here we can see this is the final computed image. Our blue, green and red is all the way to the right side of the histogram on the white side. So we can drag these sliders down somewhere a bit more sensible on the first third. And we'll just get a sneak peek at the data. I'll just try and overlap those. Not perfectly, just to give us a, a quick idea. Okay, and I'll apply that. So you can see we've got a very small trace of the galaxy in the middle but it, it doesn't even look as good as a single frame yet but all the information's there because you've stacked a load of raw files with a lot of information it's just not been manipulated yet so we've got this RGB tab here we've got a luminance tab and a saturation tab so we can quickly just play with it we can put that up to like 20 percent on the saturation and we can drag the mid-tones down and the curve down Oop, no, we'll bring that to there and this one down to about there and then apply and you can see you can just very mildly process the image but it doesn't do a very good job in Deep Sky Stacker unless you're a genius <laughs> I've never got a brilliant image out of Deep Sky Stacker alone which is why you need to come down to this processing tab here go to save picture file and we want to save that as a 16-bit, because GIMP 16-bit, so I'm going to save it as a 16-bit TIFF. And I'll call that M31DSS, just to show that it's been through Deep Sky Stacker. And then my destination is the desktop, and I'm going to hit save. And it's going to save it to the desktop for the next part, the next video, which will be using GIMP to process the image and GIMP is free to use software. It's 16-bit software, it's come a long way over the years. When it first came out it was 8-bit, not quite so useful but now I'm finding it really useful, free, relatively easy to use. So if you want to join me for that next video you know what to do, you can hit that subscribe button if you've not done so already and the bell notification so you get notified of that video when it pops up. If you fancy tickling the like button, that'd be much appreciated. I've got affiliate links for First Light Optics. And until next time, thank you so much and see you on the next video, hopefully.